What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka New York Prepper. In this video, I'm going to do another ballistics test with the 308 Winchester or 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO. And I'm going to be shooting a variety of 308 or 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO rounds into sheetrock or drywall. And the drywall or sheetrock that I'm going to be using is just some standard half inch drywall that you would find on the walls of your house. And the goal of this test is to kind of get an idea of how many residential walls a 308 Winchester or 762 by 51 millimeter NATO would penetrate through. And the rifle that I'm going to be using in this test is my POF Rogue AR-10. It has a 16 and a half inch barrel. So it generally gets about 150 to 200 feet per second less velocity than the stated velocity on the boxes of the ammunition that I used in this test. And the ammunition that I used was a combination of full metal jackets and soft points so I used four different factory full metal jackets and four different factory soft points. So this way we could get an understanding of what soft point expanding bullets will do to sheetrock and how many sheets of sheetrock they can penetrate through. More importantly, how many walls a soft point 308 or a soft point 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO could penetrate through and also what a full metal jacket can do. So the ammunition that I used in this test, starting with the full metal jacket, the PMC XTAC 147 grain full metal jacket, which has a stated velocity on the box of 2,800 feet per second. And I chronographed this load out of my rifle with an average velocity of 2,563 feet per second. Then I'm going to be shooting the Aguila 150 grain full metal jacket, which has a stated velocity of 2,750 feet per second on the box. And out of my rifle, I chronographed this load at 2,571 feet per second. Then I'm going to be shooting the Norma Tactical 147 grain full metal jacket, which has a stated velocity of 2,838 feet per second on the box. And out of my rifle, I chronographed this load at 2,522 feet per second. And finally, I'm going to be shooting the Winchester 147 grain full metal jacket, which has a stated velocity on the box of 2,800 feet per second and an average velocity out of my rifle of 2,628 feet per second. So those are the four full metal jackets I'm going to be shooting at the sheetrock. As you can see, most of them have a velocity between 2,525 feet per second and 2,625 feet per second. Moving on to the soft points or expanding bullets, I'm going to be shooting some choice ammunition, 168 green tipped triple shock X, which is a solid copper expanding bullet. That one has a stated velocity on the box of 2,720 feet per second. I actually never chronographed this load before, but we can estimate that out of my rifle, probably around 2,525 feet per second velocity. And then we're going to be shooting the Choice 165 grain AccuBond, which has a stated velocity of 2,740 feet per second on the box. And out of my 16 and a half inch barrel rifle, a actual velocity of 2,576 feet per second. Then we're going to be shooting some Federal Fusion 150 grain bonded soft point, which has a stated velocity of 2,820 feet per second on the box and out of my rifle, 2,520 feet per second. And then finally, the last soft point we're going to be shooting is the PRVI Partisan or PPU 150 grain soft point, which has a stated velocity of 2,820 feet per second on the box. And out of my rifle, an actual velocity of 2,520 feet per second. So as you can see, most of this ammunition has a velocity of between 2,500 feet per second and 
2,650 feet per second, whether it's the soft points or the full metal jackets. I purposely chose this ammunition because it gives us a wide variety of different types of ammunition. For example, I have a solid copper expanding bullet, which is the choice ammunition, 168 green Barnes tip triple shock X. Then I have a traditional soft point, which is the PPU 150 grain soft point. That's a non-bonded soft point. And then I have some bonded soft points that are jacketed, which is the 165 grain AccuBond from Choice Ammunition and the 150 grain bonded Federal Fusion. And then the rest are different types of full metal jackets from different brands. So this is going to be an interesting test. I'm curious to see how many sheets of sheetrock these different loads will penetrate through and what the difference will be between the soft points and the full metal jackets and the difference between the solid copper controlled expansion TTSX versus the other soft points. And hopefully we'll get a good understanding of how many walls it takes to stop a 308 or 762 by 51 millimeter NATO round and generally speaking one wall has two sheets of sheetrock so just with some simple math we can figure out how many walls it will take so without further delay let's start the experiment thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the video
All right, guys, so I'm going to share the results of the test with you now. I'm going to start with the deepest penetrating loads and work my way down to the least penetrating load. And after this, I'm going to show you the sheetrock up close. I'm going to go through all the sheets of sheetrock one by one so we can see what the wound channel looked like inside of the sheetrock, what kind of damage was done. Then I'm going to pull the bullets out. I'm going to weigh them. We're going to see how much weight they retained, how well they expanded, and if they held together or if their jacket and core separated. And we're also going to see what kind of deformation occurred on the bullets. So the deepest penetrating load was the PMC x -Tac. That was the 147 grain full metal jacket. That one penetrated through 45 sheets of sheetrock. Then we had the Aguila 150 grain full metal jacket. That one penetrated through 41 sheets. Then we had the Norma 147 grain full metal jacket. That one penetrated through 34 sheets. And then interestingly, we had the Choice Ammunition 168 grain TTSX penetrate through 32 sheets, which is one more sheet than the Winchester 147 grain full metal jacket, which penetrated through 31 sheets. Then we had the Choice 165 grain Acubond, which penetrated through 26 sheets. Then we had the Federal Fusion 150 grain bonded soft point, which penetrated through 25 and 23 sheets. And then finally, we had the PPU 150 grain soft point. So pretty much the ammunition performed just like I expected it to. The full metal jackets had about 25 to 50% greater penetration. If you look at the PMC x -Tac, which penetrated through 45 sheets, it had almost double the penetration as the PPU and the Federal Fusion. And the Federal Fusion and the PPU had the least amount of penetration, which makes sense because they're lightweight and they're high velocity. So they expanded the most. And then the Choice Acubond and Choice TTSX had a little bit deeper penetration than the PPU and the Federal Fusion because those bullets, the Acubond and the TTSX, are designed for very controlled expansion. And then the Full Metal Jackets, we had a wide variety of, of results here. We had the PMC x -Tac, which had 45 sheets of penetration. And then on the lower end, we had the Winchester Full Metal Jacket, which only penetrated through 31 sheets. Now, my theory about the Winchester is that because I was shooting at such a close range of about 5 to 10 yards, and the Winchester has the highest velocity out of all these bullets, it's possible that the reason why it only penetrated 31 sheets was because I was so close. If I scooted back to, let's say, 50 yards or 100 yards, it's possible that the Winchester would have had similar penetration as Norma, Aguila, or PMC. Now, I want to just compare the results of this test to some other tests that I've done with sheetrock. So the 300 Win Mag with 180 grain cutting edge solids traveling at around 2,800 feet per second penetrated through 88 sheets of sheetrock. This was a test that I did a while back, and I'll attach a link up above if you want to check that test out. But 88 sheets of sheetrock with the 300 Winchester Magnum, 180 grain flat nose copper solid, and then the Hornady Superformance SST penetrated through 23 sheets. So interestingly, the 300 Win Mag soft point penetrated the same as the 308 soft point, which is pretty interesting. Moving on, I did a test with the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum and the Buffalo Bore 440 grain hard cast bear loads traveling at 1,625 feet per second penetrated through 40 sheets, which is around the same as the Full Metal Jacket 308 in this test. And the 500 grain XTP soft point penetrated through 20 sheets. Then I did a 12-gauge shotgun test with 3-inch 1-ounce slugs 
I was able to penetrate through 17 sheets and with two and three quarter inch double lot buck I penetrated through nine sheets and then finally I did a test with the 44 Magnum and with the classic Hornady 240 grain XTP soft point load I penetrated through 20 sheets the Underwood ammo 305 grain bear load penetrated through 32 sheets the Underwood ammo 245 grain full metal jacket penetrated through 28 sheets the Underwood ammo 44 special 200 grain gold dot penetrated through 17 sheets and the Hornady 225 grain flex tip penetrated through 13 sheets so pretty interesting results here it seems that the Magnum pistols had similar penetration as the 308 which makes sense because a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum has roughly the same amount of muzzle energy as a 308 Winchester with hot loads so it makes sense that they had similar penetration for example the Buffalo Bore 440 grain hardcast penetrated 40 sheets which is about the same as the 308 full metal jacket and then the 500 grain soft point from Hornady of the 500 Magnum penetrated through 20 sheets, which is similar to the 308 soft points that I tested. Same thing, 300 Win Mag also similar penetration, except the 300 Win Mag solid completely obliterated the competition with 88 sheets of penetration, which is basically double. The penetration as the PMC X tack, which penetrated through 45 sheets. So the 300 Win Mag has an absolutely massive amount of penetration. And interestingly, the 12 gauge shotgun didn't really penetrate that much, it penetrated less than the 44 Magnum. So stay tuned, guys. I'm going to give you a closer look at the sheetrock now. And we're going to go through each sheet of sheetrock one by one so you can see the damage that these bullets did and what the wound channels look like. And then I'm going to pull the bullets out of the wood and we're going to take a closer look at the bullets. Alright guys, welcome back to the New York Prepper Top Secret Ballistics Analysis Lab in rural Pennsylvania. I want to go through all the sheets of sheetrock so we can see exactly what these bullets did to the sheetrock, what kind of expansion occurred, what size of holes they left inside of the sheetrock. So I'm going to go through all the sheets of sheetrock one by one and we're going to take a closer look. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to weigh all the bullets to see what kind of weight retention we got and what kind of expansion we got with the soft points and take a closer look at the bullets to see if they deformed or any other things happened to them as they were penetrating through all the sheetrock. So I'm just gonna show you guys all the bullet holes here. On the upper left, we had the Norma 147 grain full metal jacket. Here we had the Winchester 147 grain full metal jacket. Then we had the PMC x tac 147 grain full metal jacket. And then here we had the Aguila 150 grain full metal jacket. So these four holes right here uh, represent all the full metal jackets. And then the rest are soft points. On the upper right is the Choice Ammunition 165 grain Acubond. On the lower right... The PPU or PRVI Partisan Soft Point 150 grain. On the lower left, we had the two Federal Fusions 150 grain bonded soft points. And then right next to them, we have the Choice Ammunition 168 grain tip triple shock X. Okay, so I want to show you guys first and foremost the difference between the soft points and the full metal jackets you'll see a huge difference in the size of the holes um, from the soft points versus the full metal jackets. But what's interesting is that later on down, as the full metal jackets started to penetrate deeper through all the sheetrock, they actually left bigger holes than the soft points did because the full metal jackets started to tumble. Now, a lot of people think that full metal jackets are no good for self-defense because they'll punch a clean hole which is true,
but Full Metal Jackets will also tumble, okay? And when they tumble, they create some hydrostatic shock and they do create a large wound channel similar to a soft point once they start to tumble, okay? So I want to just show you guys the first few sheets here now and you'll see a huge difference between the Full Metal Jackets and the soft points. So here's sheet number two. You can see all the holes pretty much look the same. Sheet number three, you can start to see the federal fusions are starting to open up here. The PPU is starting to open up a little bit. The Acubond and the TTSX are not opening up yet because these are very strong bullets. They're designed for control expansion, so they didn't start to expand yet. But the fusions and the PPU are starting to expand already in the third sheet, okay? So just after one inch of sheetrock, they're already starting to expand. Full metal jackets, obviously not expanding at all. Here we got the fourth sheet, and you can see the Federal Fusions are really starting to get big. I can fit my whole index finger in here, okay? This is probably uh, over a half inch diameter hole right here from the Federal Fusion. Here we got the PPU starting to expand more now and the Acubond and the TTSX are still not expanding at all. Full Metal Jackets still look the same obviously. Here we got the fifth sheet and you can start to see a little bit of expansion now in the Acubond and the TTSX. You can see that the TTSX has less expansion than the Acubond, and the Acubond has less expansion than the uh, PPU soft point and the Federal Fusions. Now, the Acubond is a good mix of controlled expansion and violent expansion. It's meant to be like a halfway point between a traditional soft point and a solid copper soft point like the TTSX. So the TTSX being on the spectrum of extreme controlled expansion and your traditional soft points like the PPU or the Federal Fusions being on the other side of the spectrum, um, those are designed for rapid expansion. And the Acubond is somewhere in the middle. So you can clearly see that here that there's some expansion happening, but it's not as much expansion as the fusions and the PPU, but it's still a little bit more expansion than the TTSX. Here you got all these full metal jackets are still looking the same. We'll move on to the sixth sheet now, and you can see these federal fusions are really starting to leave huge holes. Look at this, guys. This is just insane. Look at that. These are the federal fusions. This is the PPU. This is the Acubond. Now the Acubond is starting to look more like the Fusions and the PPU. And the TTSX is just barely starting to expand. And the Full Metal Jackets are obviously still looking the same. Here we have the seventh sheet now. In the seventh sheet, you can see the Acubond, PPU, and Federal Fusion now all look the same. The TTSX is starting to get a little bit bigger now, but it's still nowhere near the rest of the soft points. The Full Metal Jackets all look the same. Here we have the eighth sheet, and um, the Acubond, the PPU, and the Federal Fusions are really starting to get big now. Look at the size of these holes, guys. These Federal Fusions are just leaving a massive hole in the sheetrock. Look at that. Looks like it got hit by a 12-gauge slug. And that TTSX is still not at full expansion level yet. And the Full Metal Jackets still look the same. Now we're on the ninth sheet. And you can see here the TTSX is starting to expand more. The Acubond, a lot of expansion there. PPU, Federal Fusions, lots of expansion. Okay, now we're on the tenth sheet. And you can see the TTSX is expanding more. Massive holes here guys. Look at this. Look at these federal fusions here. That's like an inch and a quarter diameter hole here. The PPU, the Acubon, huge holes. But this is what I'm talking about guys. Look at the difference between the soft points and the full metal jacket. You can see 
a clear difference. Okay, you can immediately point out which ones are full metal jacket and which ones are soft points. So continuing on, we got sheet number 11. Still got the same thing here. Sheet number 12. All right, looks pretty much the same. And now here you can start to see one of the full metal jackets is starting to tumble a little bit or lose some of its stability. And this is the Winchester 147 grain full metal jacket. And this one happens to have the highest velocity out of all of the full metal jackets. I chronographed uh, this full metal jacket from Winchester at around 2,625 feet per second, which is 100 feet per second faster than the Norma and about 75 feet per second faster than the Aguila and the PMC. So this is the highest velocity full metal jacket, and it makes sense that it's the first one that's starting to tumble already and lose stability because at such high velocity at close distances, it's going to lose its stability when it hits something, something with uh, dense material like sheetrock, okay? Usually moderate velocities and lower velocities tend to retain bullet stability better than high velocities, okay? Um, here's sheet 14, and you can really see that Winchester full metal jacket starting to uh, tumble, okay? You can see this kind of egg shape hole here. So this bullet is basically already uh, on its side. The PMC x tac is still in a nose forward position. The Aguila is still mostly in a nose forward position and the Norma is still mostly in a nose forward position, but I think it's starting to tumble a little bit as well. The soft points still all look the same. Uh, the TTSX is starting to uh, expand a lot more now. So we're in the 14th sheet here. Let's continue on. 15th sheet, you can really see that Winchester full metal jacket. Look at the size of this hole, guys. Uh, the Aguila is starting to lose stability, and the Norma has already lost stability. The PMC x tac is still punching straight. The soft points all look the same here, okay? This is the 16th sheet, 17th sheet, 18th sheet, and look at the 18th sheet, guys. Now it's getting hard to tell which ones are soft points and which ones are full metal jacket, but you can see the ones that have this sharp V shape represent the full metal jackets, okay? So here you can see the Norma is on its side. Winchester is also on its side. The Aguila is starting to lose stability, and actually the PMC is still in a nose forward position, which is really impressive. The soft points all look the same here. 19th sheet, look at the size of this hole from that Winchester. The Aguila is starting to create a larger hole now. And the Norma, look at the size of that hole, guys. This hole is bigger than the soft point holes. Very interesting. Okay, now we're on the 20th sheet. And look at that, guys. Look at the holes from those full metal jackets starting to tumble, or actually already tumbling. The Winchester, the Norma, and the Aguila all in full tumble mode and the PMC is still actually in a nose forward position so very interesting here we have the 21st sheet okay 22nd sheet and now the 23rd sheet this is where one of the federal fusions got stuck okay but look at these holes here from the full metal jackets okay they're, they're all sideways at this point even the PMC is starting to turn sideways, okay? And uh, you can see the holes here from the soft points are starting to get smaller because they shed some of their mass. You can actually see uh, some of the lead fragments embedded into this uh, dust here from the sheetrock. You can see that gray color there, okay? But uh, that's pretty crazy, the size of these holes, all right? So moving on, we got sheet 24, and this is where... The PPU got stuck in the 24th sheet, okay? 25th sheet, here's our second Federal Fusion. And look at the size of this hole here from that Winchester. 
That is just absolutely insane. And the PMC x tac is now in full tumble mode. All right. 26th sheet. Here we have our choice. 165 grain AccuBond. I found it in the 26th sheet. Okay. So now we're in the 27th sheet. And now we just have our full metal jackets and our tipped triple shock X, which is right here. And then we have our four full metal jackets here. And you can see how as they penetrated through the sheetrock, they're now in a different position than they were initially. They moved a little bit. They shifted around. Here's the 28th sheet. They're all still penetrating. 29th sheet here. 30th sheet. Okay. 31st sheet. And then this is where... The Winchester 147 grain full metal jacket finally got stuck in the 31st sheet and it left this big dent in the 32nd sheet and then the Choice Ammunition 168 grain tip triple shock X was found in the 32nd sheet. So as you can see, those solid copper expanding bullets basically have the same penetration as a full metal jacket. That's very impressive. 33rd sheet, 34th. so here we have our 34th sheet and the Norma 147 grain full metal jacket got stuck in the 34th sheet, here's the 35th sheet. Here we still have the PMC and the Aguila duking it out. 36th sheet. 37th sheet. 38th sheet. 39th sheet. 40th sheet. 41st sheet. And then... The Aguila got stuck in the 41st sheet, okay? PMC still going strong. 42nd sheet, here's a dent from the Aguila. PMC still going. Here's the 43rd sheet. 44th sheet. And finally, the 45th sheet where the PMC x tac was found, okay? And it was found with the tip pointing kind of sideways. It was backwards, basically. And then it left this little dent in the 46th sheet. So stay tuned, guys. I'm going to now show you guys the bullets up close. We're going to do an analysis up close. I'm going to weigh the bullets. I'm going to measure the expansion. We're going to take a closer look and see exactly what happened to these bullets, so stay tuned. All right, guys, so I want to give you a closer look now at the bullets. So the PMC x tac 147 grain full metal jacket penetrated the most amount of sheetrock. It penetrated through 45 sheets. That's a massive amount of sheetrock, and if you do the math of two sheets of sheetrock per one residential wall and you divide 45 by two you're looking at roughly 22 to 23 walls that's insane okay that's a lot of penetration now one thing you'll notice about the full metal jackets if you look closely at them you'll see that the winchester the aguila and the norma they're all a little bit deformed Okay, especially at the base, this is the Norma 147 grain full metal jacket. And you can see that the base of the bullet is kind of flattened out. Okay, you can see how it's deformed quite a bit actually. All right, it doesn't have a round shape anymore where the bearing surface is and where the base of the bullet is. It's just completely uh, flattened out. I don't know if that's the material that these companies use, the Aguila, Winchester, and Norma, if they use a thinner jacket than the PMC, 
Now I did take a magnet to all of these bullets to make sure that none of them had any steel in them. And none of these full metal jackets had any steel in them. But as you see the Aguila, the Winchester and the Norma, they all had a pretty good amount of deformation. Okay, um, the Aguila penetrated the second deepest next to the PMC. It penetrated through 41 sheets, and you can see it has less deformation than the Norma, which obviously helped it penetrate deeper. So I don't know if it has to do with the thickness of the jacket or if it has to do the angle that I was shooting at. If I was shooting a little bit at an angle and maybe when the bullet hit the sheetrock, it hit at an angle rather than perfectly straight. And because it hit at an angle, it had more lateral force applied to the bullet rather than head on. So I don't know if that's the case or if it's the material. I'll have to do more testing. I have some other tests planned with plywood and 2 by 10 lumber. So we're going to see how these rounds do in plywood and 2 by 10s And we'll see if it's the material of the bullet or if it's the shooting angle that applies lateral force to the bullet and causes the deformation. Okay, here's the Winchester which penetrated the least out of all of the full metal jackets and you can actually see it had the most deformation okay here's the winchester and you can see it's pretty badly deformed it's not even round it's it's basically like flat okay look at that all right now if we compare that to the pmc you can see the difference the pmc is actually still perfectly round so I don't know if it's the jacket material let me know what you guys think in the comments if you think it's the jacket or if it's because of the angle I was shooting at but you can see the PMC full metal jacket is pretty much mostly round okay look at that beautiful bullet still maintaining its round bearing surface and you can see the boat tail is still there, okay, and now compare that to this uh, Winchester, okay, the Winchester looks like crap, looks like someone took a hammer and just flattened it out. So again, I'm not sure if that's the angle that these bullets hit the sheetrock at, or if it's the material. Moving on to the soft points, as expected, the choice 168 grain tipped triple shock X penetrated the most out of all the soft points it penetrated through 32 sheets of sheetrock and it actually out penetrated the Winchester 150 grain full metal jacket which is interesting because it's an expanding bullet but the reason why it out penetrated the Winchester full metal jacket is that you can see here it has better sectional density because the Winchester full metal jacket is only 150 grains versus this one is 168 grains so the bullet is longer and in the big game hunting community we call that sectional density okay sectional density is critical for penetration and you can see that this 168 grain TTSX is basically uh, as long or longer than the FMJ after it expanded okay after it expanded it's still the same length as the 150 grain Winchester and because it's solid copper it didn't deform at all which helped it maintain a straight line and helped it to penetrate but it had some nice expansion as you can see uh, probably not as much expansion as it should have because this thing is traveling a little bit slower out of my 16 and a half inch barrel AR-10 but still this would do enough damage to bring down in my opinion an elk um, or even a medium sized bear so I'm gonna take some measurements though and we'll see how much expansion we got but look at that beautiful bullet here 
um, pretty impressive. I'm always impressed by the TTSX and the LRX bullets. I think they're great hunting bullets. Then we have the PPU, which performs pretty well. It made this nice mushroom. I was actually really impressed by the PPU soft point. I thought that the core and the jacket would separate, which usually happens when you have a non-bonded soft point jacketed bullet, but somehow the core and the jacket stayed together. As you can see, perfect mushroom. That's just beautiful. Look at that, guys. Absolutely beautiful mushroom here. This is exactly what you want to see. This would drop a deer very quickly because of the expansion. Look at that expansion, guys. Very impressive. Everything held together. The base looks good. This is really good. This looks good. So now if you compare the Federal Fusions to the PPU, you can see the difference here. The Federal Fusions seem to have a softer jacket than the PPU. It looks like the PPU has a thicker jacket. Okay, and because it has a thicker jacket, it controls the expansion a little bit more versus the Federal Fusion seems to have a thinner jacket, which causes more rapid expansion. But because they are bonded, the core held together with the jacket. So even though I was shooting at such a short distance, I was only like five or ten yards away, but still the core and the jacket held together so that's really impressive at such a high velocity I mean these bullets impacted the sheet rocket over 2500 feet per second and they held together nicely but you can see the difference between the PPU soft point and the Federal Fusions okay very rapid and violent expansion from the Federal Fusion look at this shard of copper here okay um, the copper jacket just peeled really far back but I imagine if you were to shoot this at a target at a hundred two hundred three hundred yards away four hundred yards away it would probably look more similar to the PPU okay so again remember this was at an extremely close range and so the expansion was much more dramatic but still look at that expansion that's pretty big and we're going to take a measurement to see what kind of expansion but that's looking like about a half inch of expansion so that's going to leave a big hole so pretty cool guys look at that nice results from the federal fusion and the ppu and then we have the 165 grain AccuBond which also held together. It had a little bit more controlled expansion than the Federal Fusion, but still expanded more than the PPU. I don't know if the PPU is bonded or not. I can't really tell. It's possible that it is bonded. I'm going to have to do some research on it. I don't know if any of you guys know anything about PPU bullets, but I don't know if they bond them or not, but... Um, this is the AccuBond on the right, the 165 grain AccuBond. You can see it held together well. All right. So I'm going to take some measurements now. We're going to weigh these to see what kind of weight retention we got. But very interesting results here. And as you can see, the full metal jackets penetrated about 25 to 50% more sheetrock than the soft points. For example, the PPU, we penetrated 24 sheets. And the PMC X TAC penetrated 45 sheets, almost double the penetration of the PPU. So, very interesting results, guys. Even the soft points have a lot of penetration 24 sheets, up to 32 sheets of sheetrock with a 308 soft point. That is just a massive amount of sheetrock. So, stay tuned, and I'm going to weigh these bullets and we're going to take some measurements. All right, guys, so I got my calipers here. These are some Frankfurt Arsenal reloading calipers. They're very high quality. And I zeroed it out, as you can see. So let's measure the expansion of the choice. 165 grain AccuBond. Let's see what kind of expansion we got. 
So at the widest point, you can see almost 0.6 inches of expansion. That's a lot of expansion, guys, from a 308. Very impressive. Look at that, guys. All right, so about a half inch of expansion with the AccuBond. And let's go to the Federal Fusion now. Here's one of the Federal Fusions. A lot of expansion here, 0.57 inches, 0.64 inches. Wow, that's a lot of expansion, guys. Now let's go to the other Federal Fusion, the weird one that has this... Uh, shard of copper coming off the side let's see what kind of expansion we got here 0.54 inches of expansion so that's very impressive okay it's a lot of expansion 0.6 okay moving on to the ppu which is one of my favorites now this one has about 0.57 inches of expansion here okay so a lot of expansion with these soft points about half an inch to two-thirds of an inch of expansion very impressive okay and then finally the TTSX this one had the least amount of expansion which is normal for a solid copper expanding bullet about 0.43 inches 0.4 inches of expansion so not much but still that's you know 43 caliber hole uh, that'll do a lot of damage so look at that 0.444 <laughs> that's funny must be my lucky day so I'm gonna weigh these bullets now we're gonna see what kind of weight retention we got so stay tuned all right guys I got my Lyman reloading scale Got my 100 gram weight. We're gonna just zero out the scale. All right, so it's zeroed out. Let's just double check it, 100 grams. And we'll switch back to grains. So we're gonna start with my favorite, the PPU 150 grain. Let's see what kind of weight retention. 122 grains, that's very impressive. Let's try that again. 121.8, 121.9. So we're just going to say 122 grains. That's really good. It only lost about 30 grains. That's very good, especially at such a close range. Now we're going to do the Federal Fusion. 119 grains, roughly, for one of them. So pretty similar to the PPU. Now we'll take the second Federal Fusion, also about 119 grains. So pretty similar to the PPU. Moving on to the Choice 168 grain TTSX. This one should have 100% weight retention. So yeah, 170, I'm sorry, 167.6, almost 100% weight retention. That's to be expected, 167.7. Now the 165 grain AccuBond. I really love AccuBond bullets. I have a lot of them for my 300 Win Mag. 132.8 grains. So really good. So about 133 grains of weight retention. So it lost 32 grains. So still very impressive. Again, remember the distances here, guys. I was shooting at 5 to 15 yards. So that's a lot of weight retention for such a close range. You know, if I were to shoot at 50 or 100 or 200 yards, the weight retention would be even higher than that. So now let's weigh the Norma 147 grain full metal jacket. And basically 100% weight retention, 146.8. Now let's go to the Aguila, which had the second highest amount of penetration. That one actually has 148.4 grains 
of weight retention. So it actually lost a grain and a half and uh, I made a mistake. It's a 150 grain bullet, it's not 147 grains. So it lost a grain and a half, but basically 100% weight retention. The Winchester, 150 grain, I'm sorry, 147 grain full metal jacket. It lost four grains almost. So I'm not too happy with this Winchester. Now what's interesting is the Winchester has the highest velocity out of these. So it makes sense that it would have the most deformation and the most amount of uh, weight loss. So lost about uh, four grains. And then finally the PMC X-Tac, which performed beautifully. Look at this beautiful bullet here, just perfect. And this one lost about a grain and a half. Okay, 145.6. So that's pretty much it for this test, guys. Stay tuned to my channel for more ballistics tests with the 308 and 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something and I hope this helps you out. So take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.